This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hello friends, in this video we will try to understand some of the challenges during nucleus management in a case of hypermature cataract. Uh, this is a 70 year old lady with a hypermature cataract and after creating the side post, the anticapsule is stained with trypan blue and OVD is injected into the anterior chamber. The main incision of 2.8 mm is created. I initiate the capsurexis with the help of a forceps and the milky cortex aggresses out. But the visibility is not severely hampered so I continue with my rexis and complete it which is a relatively smaller one. I am now using my irrigation handpiece to wash out all the milky cortex within the bag and care is taken to press down on the floor of the main incision to let out all the fluid without causing an increase in the pressure in the antechamber in the capsule bag. I enlarge the rexus by making a small tangential cut using a micro scissors and then with the help of the forceps it is enlarged to the desired size. So now I have an adequately sized rexus and since the bag is devoid of any epinucleus and cortex and the nucleus is free floating and does not have underlying cushion. So in this scenario the chopping is going to be slightly tricky. I bury my exposed tip completely into the nucleus and then score the nucleus. At this moment we can see the nucleus begins to tilt and this is not alright. Uh, this could be potentially damaging to the posterior capsule. So to prevent the nucleus tilt I make a small trench in the center of the nucleus the idea is to get a firmer grip on the deeper part of the central nucleus. This will minimize the torque and hopefully will minimize the nucleus tilting during chopping. The phaco tip is buried deep until none of the exposed part is seen. Then the chopper comes down vertically and just in front of the tip and then the chopper moves laterally. And since the nucleus is hard, the chopping and lateral separation is continued at subsequent deeper planes and some portion of the posterior plate are refusing to give up. So I just leave it at that moment, rotate the nucleus and rebury my phaco tip at a different point in a deeper plane and then continue the separation. Since there is no cushion of epinucleus in the bag, no pressure can be exerted on the posterior capsule. So my left hand is doing all the lateral separation and all the movements but my right hand with the phaco probe is held steady. I am not making any attempt to move it laterally. In fact, I am consciously ever so slightly trying to pull my right hand up with the phaco probe up and anteriorly so that the posterior capsule is not put under any stress. The tip is again buried to its full length. Then we proceed with the vertical chop and lateral separation. Again, I ensure that my right hand is still and all the movements are predominantly being done by the left hand. So this process is repeated uh, until the entire nucleus is divided into six fragments. Now I begin to emulsify these fragments. The goal is to ensure that the emulsification process is done at the level of the anterocapsule as far away from the endothelium as possible. The amount of phaco delivered is controlled by my foot and we can see that there is some lens shatter happening because the power is ever so slightly more. So I need to control the energy delivery with my foot switch to ensure that the right amount of energy is delivered so that the fragments do not fly around and 
the each fragment has to just dance on the tip uh, until completely getting emulsified the tip is held steady at the center of the chamber and i usually like to keep the bevel facing down and to my left the chopper is held beside and slightly above and this helps me to prevent any fragment flying away and hitting the endothelium i think as we uh, proceed with a particular case we should uh, try to have an understanding about the hardness of that particular nucleus and also about the sweet spot of the energy which is the energy should be just efficient and also should not cause any chatter and all this uh, energy delivery has to be controlled by the foot pedal with the power delivery set to linear mode so here we have the last fragment is being carefully emulsified the minimal cortex which is there is aspirated out and the intraocular lens is placed into the bag the ovd is then washed out to summarize in hypermature cataracts with the, the free floating nucleus we must expect the nucleus to tilt during chopping especially when we are using Uh, the smaller tips with the alcon machines uh, this nucleus tilt can be minimized by creating a small central trench which basically helps us in holding the central core of the nucleus that is it allows it to hold it at a much deeper plane which would ensure a much firmer grip and minimize the chance of rotation during vertical chopping well the other good way to minimize this issue would be to use the horizontal chop technique uh, but it would be intimidating for many surgeons as we have an empty bag around the nucleus but for surgeons who have mastered it it would be the preferred choice so thank you for attention and hope this helps